So hello everybody, I'm Emily Grego, I'm President and CEO here at the San Leandro Chamber of Commerce. Today we are having our Government Affairs Meet the Candidates and our guest is Fred Simon. He is running for City Council in District 4. Uh, he currently serves on the Oraloma Board. I think that's correct. You'll have to correct me on the complete name for that. I always mess it up. I apologize. Okay. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna meet Fred today. We're gonna ask him a few questions and um, just get to know a little bit more about you. So thank you for being here, Fred. Thank you for having me. So the, it's the Ora Loma Sanitation Board. Is that correct? Yes, or Ora Loma Sanitary District, and I'm a board member on the Sanitary District. Okay, great. Yeah. There you go, you've got the whole name for me. So Fred, um, if you could tell us why you're running for office, if you could just briefly let us know what you see are the major issues facing San Leandro and how, how you will respond to them. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm running for San Leandro City Council to move San Leandro to a better place in these challenging times. As a civil engineer, I'm also, as we talked about, I'm a board member of the Oraloma Sanitary District I'm also a senior commissioner for the city of San Leandro, and I understand how to solve problems. I'm also an African-American. I'm raised in a biracial family. And I've understand and I've experienced the social injustices that exist. I will use my problem-solving abilities and life experiences to work together with all San Leandrans, our neighboring communities, and local, state, and federal government agencies to tackle these challenging social and environmental issues as well as economic issues that we face to improve the quality of life, equity, and care for our families. And some of the, the major issues that I see um, that mm -hmm. we're facing and that I will be tackling, um, number one is to build community equity and quality of life. And this is a big, big driver on, on why I ran. I always wanted to run for city council, um, but never really sure when the time was quite right. However, with the uh, killing of George Floyd, as well as Stephen Taylor here in San Leandro, that really motivated me to, to jump in and start my, my uh, city council career a bit earlier than expected. So building our community equity is very important to, to me to not only build our community, build our businesses, to build everything. So I want to bring together all of our races, age groups, LGBT community, to share in economic opportunities. I see a big divide amongst um, the different races and um, the different factions of our community. So I wanna work together with our community to, to bring everyone together. Um, also building an age-friendly city, focusing um, a lot of our efforts on city development on our senior population and uh, helping them navigate, uh, whether it's with housing, uh, or with uh, infrastructure, with parks, uh, just focusing a lot on our seniors to help them uh, navigate our community. And also, this is a big one, ending homelessness. And I know it sounds like a big task to actually end homelessness, but it needs to be done. I know it's a nationwide, a worldwide issue. However, it's impacting not only the homeless, but it's impacting our residents, our businesses, and just from a humanitarian standpoint, it's the right thing to do. And from an economic standpoint, it's, yeah. it's, you know, we're throwing a lot of money at a problem that we're just pushing folks from one end to the other. Uh, that's the first step. A uh, second thing I'd like to do is to beautify San Leandro. I see San Leandro in definite need of improving our curb appeal from a residential side to businesses um, there's some nice businesses, there's some nice residents, and there's also some not so nice. I really believe that's impacting our ability to grow as a city. Um, and I'd also like to share with our residents how community blight can harm our health and economy. And that's something I have a really good understanding with uh, as an Oraloma Sanitary Board member is trash, recycling, um, and I also am part of the Nate Miley's uh, CURB group, which is Communities United to Remove Blight, to improve mm -hmm. the, the health uh, and the, the vibrancy of our community by, you know, cleaning it up. A third is I want to bring in businesses and housing, which directly relates to the Chamber of Commerce. So I'm very excited to, to meet with you and, and to become a part of your, your organization. 
I would like to increase the number and variety of shops, restaurants, grocery stores, as well as entertainment venues. And instead of folks leaving San Leandro for shopping or for entertainment, you know, why? You know, why not stay here in San Leandro? So I, and it helps with the environment too, coming, coming back on our carbon foot, footprint of so much uh, vehicle traffic out of San Leandro. Let's stay in San Leandro. I do support housing that's supported by the community. Uh, Bay Fair, for example, I think is a huge opportunity for us to increase housing as well as businesses, as well as working together with Kaiser Hospital. Um, I think that's a good opportunity, that large plot of, plot of land they have there on Marina Boulevard to develop that to enhance our community as well as Kaiser. Yeah. My three uh, main issues I want to tackle here as a city, San Leandro City Council person, if I'm elected. Okay, well, thank you. That, that's, that gives us a really great idea as to what you're concerned with. So thank you for uh, telling us all about that. My next question is, do you have a steering committee or a manager for your campaign? What endorsements have you received or are you seeking? And then this next question, uh, what do you, what's a little bit of your strategy with your campaign? Okay, I do not have a campaign manager. I and my kitchen cabinet are my campaign manager. I have very uh, trusted close friends and family, uh, some who have run successful campaigns and are a wealth of experience. Uh, plus I get into the nuts and bolts of the campaign. Um, you know, I, I complete all my questionnaires for all the endorsements that I've received. I um, go through the historical voting data to understand where um, you know, the high voting populations are, as well as I still want to focus on the underrepresented areas of the city. Even though they may not vote as much, they need to be heard. So I am my, my cabinet. Uh, we're our managers. We are the manager. And it was successful with my campaign in 2018 for Oro Loma Sanitary. Um, mm -hmm. I was able to win against an incumbent. A part of my strategy was similar to Oro Loma, where it's very important for me to get out and meet people. And it's difficult with the COVID situation, extremely difficult. Uh, however, I, it's still important um, to understand what are the concerns of the residents, what are the concerns of the businesses, and um, also our, our, our city employees, our city staff. I need to under, understand and meet folks. So that's what I'm doing. I am walking following social distancing protocol, masks, distance, and uh, getting to know people. I'm pr primarily dropping information on doors. However, if they're out in the yards, which a lot of people, you know, really are trying to do a lot of outdoor activities since they're cooped up in the house. So I am meeting a lot of people, get a lot of input, and uh, getting my, my name out with dropping information, as well as placing signs and banners throughout the city. I will also be uh, participating in phone and text banking. And my, with my endorsements, uh, I plan on um, getting on slate cards as well to get my information out. And some of my, my key endorsements that I've received uh, so far are uh, Rob Bonta. I've received his endorsement as well as uh, Mayor Cutter, uh, some of our city council members, uh, Karina Lopez, uh, Pete Ballou, Victor Aguilara, um, Benny Lee, and I'm researching to others. So I'm outreaching to, you know, everyone. I want to, you know, meet and outreach to as many folks as I can. And just to get everyone's input. Um, also, uh, building trades. I am a union member myself. I'm Local 21 Professional Technical Engineers. Uh, so I've received endorsement from my union, Local 21, as well as, uh, like I mentioned, building trades, uh, sprinkler fitters, sheet metal workers, uh, and a few other unions. And I'm seeking uh, endorsement from the Chamber of Commerce, PAC. Thank you so much for that. And I, th I thought I had seen one of your banners. Uh, I, I don't know where, but I, I thought, oh, wow, so Fred, Fred Simon's got some banners out in town. So I did see one. I can't remember. Yeah. Though, but yeah, so good job. One, one's on a business, uh, Clark's over in Washington, who I've supported for 25 years since I've been here, landscaping my yard with them. So I'm a local, nice. I, I like to support local businesses. Yeah, 
Yes, it's great. And we like hearing that at the chamber. We, you know, we feel at the chamber that we have such a diverse group of businesses in San Leandro that honestly, every business can utilize each other in some way or form. So we always really feel like the, the whole um, ecosystem of businesses can really be worked out here in San Leandro because we've just got so many diverse businesses. So my next question is, when we're talking about businesses, what are the top issues affecting local businesses? Well, I would say right now, COVID, COVID and, and getting back to business, and getting back and running, that's got to be the top issue. In my walking around town, uh, whether it's downtown or whether it's in the manor area or greenhouse, business are greatly impacted by the COVID pandemic and the looting that had occurred uh, from the social injustice issues as a, as a result of that. But those are two major issues that I see. And that, that's going to be you know, critical for the city to, to help the businesses get back on their feet and to grow the businesses too. So not just to get you know, the doors open and get you know, business started, but growing it to try to help make up for the months and months that we are either staying at home or um, shut down. So I think that is the biggest issue is, is the COVID situation and getting so that. If, if you could point to a strategy right now that, that would help steward that, you know, strong local economy once again, what, what would be one strategy that you feel like you could help put in place? Yeah, one, one strategy I would, I would say is making sure that we, that we are supported or that our community development department for the city of San Leandro is well-funded and intact. That's gonna be critical to make sure our businesses get the support and the um, resources that they need. There is a budget deficit within, in the city and because of the COVID situation and mm -hmm. looking for places to cut. And that is one I do not support. We need to keep the community development department going such that they can help the businesses find uh, funding al alternatives and funding opportunities to help bridge the gap from the situation now where there's not many folks out shopping till, you know, in a few months, hopefully a few months from now when folks are back out shopping again. So that would be looking for creative ways to, to fund, you know, to help businesses through it. Mm -hmm. And there was um, some money had been taken from like a facade a grant or facade loan to help businesses through the COVID. And if there are other, other businesses that didn't receive that, um, working with state or federal governments to find additional uh, funding alternatives. So that's, that's a key issue. And then, you know, stewarding a strong economy is, you know, pushing to continue development from business and housing here in San Leandro and not let this COVID um, slow us down from the marina to the transit-oriented development of Bayfair, we, we have to push and keep those projects moving. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, just we are having some challenges, but we've just got to keep pushing forward because we've done so much work for so many years to to make those projects, you know, happen and and get the plans in place. And so I um, I agree. We've just got to keep moving forward. So um, my last question, because we've got a few more minutes is, you know, with all of the challenges that we have, with unemployment rate being through the roof, with our public transportation systems, you know, um, they are losing resources and ridership every single day. And, you know, we, we see businesses closing. We, we hope that, you know, the businesses are gonna be able to reopen, but we might have more business closures. We just don't really know because we just don't know how long this is gonna, be affecting us. So with all of with all of those comments, how do you feel San Leandro can remain stable during these challenging times? Okay, it kind of ties into the question before. Uh, I would say as a city, we have to continue to push for growth. We have to continue to push for um, progressing the projects that were already slated to move forward, such as the Marina Shoreline development or the Bayfair project. I think we have to get folks 
comfortable with getting out and shopping again and alleviating, alleviating a lot of the fears that are out there, um, making sure that we prop, follow proper social distancing protocols. And that's what I'm doing in my campaign is, you know, mask, uh, proper distancing, and folks are glad to see me when they're outside. They're like, wow, you're actually out. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm being safe. And we can all come out as long as we're, we're safe and, and smart about it and, and we, we protect ourselves. So I, I think getting folks comfortable, uh, alleviating their fears that, you know, we can shop, we can uh, support each other, and we can continue to grow and develop our city. I think that's going to be critical. And there's also projects out there, like I mentioned, I kind of mentioned before, is the homeless situation. That, to me, is has impacts in so many different areas in our city. And I think now is a time where we can really focus on that to help people, because there's a lot of people who are becoming homeless because of the COVID and they mm -hmm. may not have a place to stay um, and they had previously had a place to stay, but also the people that are living under the freeways. Um, but it's important to help long-term solution and that it will, once we come out of this COVID situation, we can have cleaner areas, not so much trash laying around that will help bring in more businesses mm -hmm. and it will help our workforce. Um, we can get people jobs from being homeless to, you know, helping clean up the community or working in, in stores. And I think it's just really important to really tackle the, the homeless situation. Yeah, I, I, I agree. You know, that's kind of been a little bit of a common theme that we hear from lots of folks is, um, you know, in the middle of in the middle of all of this and all of the challenges, the homelessness rate is is it was bad and it's it's growing because of everything that we're all we've all been going through and people losing their jobs and not being able to pay their you know rent or mortgages and we don't even know what the fallout is of that just yet. So, um, so I, I, you know, so thank you for that. Thank you for, for bringing that up. Um, as I said, we are, I was only going to have you for 15 minutes. So we're right at about 15 minutes. So Fred, thank you for joining us and for all of the San Leandro Chamber members. Fred's going to be joining us on September 22nd. Uh, we'll have uh, more questions and answers. So if you've got questions out, after hearing Fred today, join us on the 22nd. And you'll be able to ask him directly. So thank you, Fred, for this. I appreciate your time and good luck. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And I look forward to the interview with the other chamber members. Thank you.